If you grew up in the early 2000s, then you clearly remember a rapper with a real name that sounded like a made-up rapper name, Obi Trice III. He always appeared alongside Eminem, and everyone was sure he was going to rise to huge prominence in the hip-hop world. But his future would be much, much darker. Obi Trice got shot in the head and survived. Then in 2019, he shot his girlfriend's teenage son and was sentenced to prison. How did a promising rapper who collaborated with all the big names lose everything? Let's take a look at the story of Obi Trice. Obi Trice III was born on November 14, 1977 in Detroit, Michigan. He grew up in a rough neighborhood on Detroit's west side with his mother and three brothers. When he turned 11, his mom bought him the birthday present that changed his life forever, a small karaoke machine. Obi would rap over the beats of Run DMC and NWA whenever he had spare time. By the time he was 14, he was attending rap battle spots all over Detroit, the most important scene of all being the hip-hop shop. This was a clothing store opened in 1993 by fashion designer Maurice Malone. But just like its name says, the hip-hop shop wasn't known for its clothes, but for the open mic contests which saw stars like Eminem and Kuniva from D12 rap battle there for the first time. This was the mid-1990s, and Obi Trice went by Obi-1 at the time. The open mic rap battles at the hip-hop shop were hosted by Proof from D12. When Obi first met Proof, who was about to introduce him at the shop, Proof asked him, What's your name? Your real name, no gimmicks. He was then introduced as Obi Trice, and has kept his real name as his rap name. In fact, the motto, real name, no gimmicks, would become so associated with his name that no fans could say Obi's name without saying the motto. Almost instantaneously, Obi became a sensation in Detroit's rap scene. As the people who frequented the hip-hop shop recognized his talent, every time he rapped, he got a positive response. So, he made a decision. That's when I said, okay, I want to get into this music. Really, I didn't have a backup plan. Initially, his plans to go into the music business proved easier said than done. Although today, you can't say rap without thinking Detroit. In the late 1990s, this was still an undiscovered music scene. Growing up in the rough neighborhood that he did, Obi did pretty much anything to make ends meet. There's a lot of dope and thieves in the city, and there wasn't anything happening. I never worked one job for more than a month from 94 to 99. I just had problems with authority. But Obi's big break was around the corner. In the year 2000, D12 member Bazaar introduced Obi to Eminem by organizing a very casual audition. Audition is probably an overstatement. Obi rapped for Eminem through the window of his car. Eminem had just had huge success with the Slim Shady LP and was pretty much the name of Detroit hip hop by now. Although Eminem was in a rush and Obi wasn't expecting anything grand to happen, one week later, he got a call from his manager. Obi was invited to have dinner and go to a kid rock party with Eminem. That same year, Obi signed to Shady Records, Eminem's new record label. This was huge. He did an intro snippet for Eminem's lead single Without Me, rapped on songs for the 8 Mile soundtrack, and also did a cameo for the movie. In 2003, Obi had finally put together his debut album, Cheers. All the big names were part of it. Dr. Dre, Eminem, and Timbaland were the producers. G-Unit, Busta Rhymes, and Nate Dogg all made contributions to the songs. The future looked very promising for Obi's career, but something happened. On New Year's Eve 2005, Obi was driving home with his girlfriend when his car was fired at six times while on the Lodge Expressway in Detroit. One of the bullets went straight into his head. Crazily enough, he managed to continue driving the car long enough to get off the expressway. Then his girlfriend waved down the police. Obi was taken into Providence Hospital's emergency unit. The bullet had miraculously avoided his brain, and Obi's life was not threatened. However, the doctors debated whether it was possible to remove the bullet from Obi's head without doing a very dangerous operation. The answer was no, it wasn't. So Obi still has a bullet lodged in his skull to this day. Obi's second album, Second Round on Me, dropped in August of 2006, but the response was not nearly as good as his first album. He sold some 70,000 copies in the first week, which was only a quarter of what he had sold with Cheers. Shortly after the release, Obi's label mate and friend Proof died in front of a Detroit nightclub. 
after an argument escalated and his assailant opened fire on him. At Proof's funeral, Obi spoke against gang fighting, which he had been the victim of less than a year ago. I want to talk to those coming up in the hood, coming up in the struggle. We're killing each other, and it's about nothing, nothing, nothing. We're all dying over nothing. Proof's death shook the D12 crew. Detroit and the whole hip-hop community. Nothing felt the same to any of the rappers in Detroit at the time. By 2008, Obi made a decision. He would leave Shady Records forever. This was mainly because he didn't feel he was being properly promoted. This frustration was directly pointed at Jimmy Levine, the co-founder of Interscope Records and co-creator of Beats Electronics. I don't think Jimmy Levine really cared for me. I was just me. Indeed, there was no conflict between Obi, Eminem, and Dr. Dre as it had been speculated. Both Eminem and Dr. Dre appeared on Obi's songs long after his departure from Shady Records. Over the last decade, Obi released several mixtapes and projects like Bottoms Up. In August 2019, Obi released his fifth album, named simply The Fifth, with guest appearances from Magneto 7, Director Casper, and Exhibit. And in December of the same year, Obi released a diss track called Spanky Hayes against Nick Cannon. He was defending Eminem after Nick Cannon had released two diss tracks against him. This wasn't exactly rare in the hip hop world, as many artists would use rap to beef others and this only created a tit-for-tat mentality, perhaps the gang mentality that Obi once condemned at Proof's funeral. None of Obi's musical projects came even close to the success of his shady record days, and today, it's most likely that he will never return to his previous success, as Obi Trice has done the unthinkable. On December 9th, 2019, TMZ reported that Obi was arrested for shooting his girlfriend's teenage son. Obi was also charged with possession of an unregistered firearm. Apparently, Obi was fighting with his girlfriend and the gun went off accidentally. Obi had been drinking all day and was in a state where he couldn't control his temper. That is why, according to him, he ended up pushing his girlfriend during the argument. Her son then intervened to stop the fight and confronted Obi, leading to more fighting. The mom and the son were getting ready to leave the house when Obi went and got his gun. Seeing this, his stepson feared for his and his mom's safety, so he tried to disarm Obi. As they were both struggling to gain control of the gun, they fell to the ground, and the gun discharged, hitting the young man in the groin. His mom rushed him to the hospital, and Obi stayed behind. Obi's stepson suffered a fractured pelvis, all at the hands of his once famous stepdad. When the police arrived, Obi was still holding the pistol. He was quickly ordered to the ground and taken into custody. Apparently, a neighbor called the cops early that morning when he heard loud noises and shouting coming from Obi's house. Obi was then booked into Oakland County, Michigan on two charges, aggravated felony assault of a family member with a gun and contempt of court for violating a protective order. On July 8, 2020, Obi had his trial. The verdict? 90 days in the Oakland County Jail. His stepson also filed a restraining order against him, stating that Obi has unpredictable behavior when he's drinking. It's unknown whether his fame helped him in getting a lighter verdict. In any case, many people have argued that 90 days is way too little for the offense, even if Obi did not shoot his stepson intentionally. On top of all this, during the last few years, Obi also managed to stir the LGBTQ community after a strange rant at a Toronto show. Obi received a huge backlash for his statements and his public apology didn't really feel like an apology. I understand the different perspectives and not wanting to be called any slurs, but I'm a hip hop artist and everything can't be taken so seriously. He explained that that's the way rappers talk and that the gay people who know him know he has no bias against the LGBTQ community. Later, Obi tried to connect his remarks to the Kevin Hart and Oscars controversy. But we supposed to respect gay and then they took my man Kevin Hart, he had to duck down and get off the Oscars because of this. But no matter how he twisted his story, Obi lost a lot of fans with his comments. And today, one year after he went to prison for shooting his stepson, Obi is pretty much cancelled. He doesn't appear in the news and he rarely posts on his social media accounts. It's unknown whether Obi's fans will ever forgive him for his latest actions. Obi Trice seems to be in between condemning and condoning the gang mentality that shaped his youth. Perhaps the world wants something new.
And that's the end of our video. What do you think about Obi Trice's life? Should he have gotten a bigger punishment for shooting his stepson? Let us know what you think, and while you're at it, why not click the like button? And of course, if you'd like to stay up to date with all the viral sensations out there, make sure you subscribe to our channel. See you next time, and thanks for watching.